Good morning, everybody. Is there anything better than having the complete trust and partnership of a client? Today is a great story about that topic. Let's jump right in. If you're enjoying these stories, please hit that like and subscribe button right now and we'll keep on providing the best content possible. While you're at it, go ahead and check out our Patreon store. Check out our um, Patreon store, geez. No, our, our Patreon offering. We've got so many classes, tips to help you create your uh, real estate business, uh, your just a regular business in general. We've got so much great content there, so please check out our Patreon offering. Um, we also have a, uh, a Red Bubble store. We've got lots of great merchandise. Uh, check out our website. Guys, we got so much great stuff to offer. So please check out all the links below. Have some fun. And uh, once again, if you haven't done it yet, check out that like and subscribe button and hit them right now. Okay, let's jump right in. When someone first gets their real estate license, it is overwhelming. You go from not knowing anything about real estate to getting a license not knowing at all what to do with it and how to create a business and having to actually find clients, which is not what you learn in real estate school, right? And that's actually what prevents many of agents from having a hugely successful business. It's not that they don't know real estate, it's that they don't know marketing and actually how to go out and find clients. One of the biggest hurdles a new agent has is security. If you've never sold a home, how are you gonna go out and convince somebody that you can be the best real estate person that they are looking for or needing, right? That fear is insane. And a lot of times you hear that fake it till you make it term from just these things because you have no choice. It's understanding you're gonna be scared. It's understanding you're gonna have to try to wing it and ask for help. And just to be a sincere, honest realtor, believe it or not, goes in your favor. If you're honest with new clients, they'll actually respond positively to it. Much better than an older, experienced, jaded agent who is just not enthusiastic or too cocky or so many other things, right? So that's where today's story takes off. I was that new agent 12 years ago and I was struggling to find clients. And um, I worked for a wonderful broker who provided internet leads, and we were getting leads from all over the country. And so of course you're calling new leads as soon as they come in, you're trying to build rapport the best you can, and most of them don't pick up the phone, you know, bound to happen, and you're just trying to do everything possible. Well. I sent out a group of emails to um, a guy named Jay and uh, he responded back and he was like, hey, um, I live in New York. We hear Arizona is a great place to invest in properties. Obviously, this is back like 2009, 10, 11, I believe. And we want to take advantage of this market. Can you send us more information? I said, absolutely. So I started sending him homes, started sending him like comps, market updates, different ideas about short sales and bank owned homes, things like that. Next thing you know, he says, hey, I think this home is a pretty good deal. What do you think? And so I, I run comps, I run some rental comps and he says, yeah, that seems like a good deal. Let's go ahead and write an offer. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, don't you want to go see it first? He's like, oh, no, no, I, I live in New York. Um, I'm not going to be able to take a look at it, but uh, I trust you. That moment changed my life. That was the first moment pretty much anybody in my life had actually said, I trust you. Not only did he say he trusted me, but he trusted me with a hundred and let's call it thirty or forty thousand dollar home purchase of a bank owned home or short sale which was not going to be in the perfect condition it was not supposed to be a moving ready home it needed some work it was going to turn into a rental property and through our communication he was ready to pull the trigger I was so blindsided by it I was taken back 
and kind of question. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> uh, you haven't seen this home. Um, and you haven't met me face to face yet. Uh, you want to place an offer? He's like, well, yeah, is there any reason I shouldn't? It's almost like I almost felt guilty and was like, no, you know, no, let's do this. I'll go take pictures tomorrow, I'll take some more video. And actually at that moment, I went above and beyond, right? So, uh, placed the offer, ended up getting his offer accepted, um, opened escrow, and when you're walking somebody through, and keep in mind this is like 2010-11, like, you know, Zoom meetings and stuff like that weren't on the daily, this was a little bit different back then, and we received the report, he trusted me to find the home inspector, he trusted me with the lender, he trusted me with the escrow officer, thank God. I was referred great people as a new agent and we were very successful. Not only were we very successful, but as soon as he completed that first purchase, he went ahead and we kept looking. He found a second home and then we found a third home. And then this was about 12, um, let's say 16, 18 months later. Okay. I don't think it was quite two years, but it was in that ballpark where we had closed on several properties, you know, fixed them all up. They've been rented out, performing well. I, I was making my personal transition where I thought the housing market's good, but it's not as good as the multi-unit market. And at that time, I started sending out, you know, duplexes, threeplexes, uh, fourplexes out to my investors. Of course. He was one of the first ones to jump at it and I'm pretty sure he was my I helped him with my third multi-unit purchase and what was unique about this one was that the previous were in just they were standalone buildings this was the first time we purchased a building inside of a larger complex that we weren't necessarily the majority owners of let's call it that and it was just a very unique situation where not only did I help him purchase it, but since it had its own management, we didn't even put these into management. So he has other properties now that we're not even managing and we have a great relationship. He knows I'm in it for his better best interest. I mean, taking the fiduciary duty to its peak to have clients that trust you every which way from Sunday to buy homes sight unseen, to go through inspections, to give you checks. I have a great story I'll be telling you guys in a couple weeks about somebody giving me a check. <laughs> anyway, I can't wait to tell you. There's so many great stories coming up. Message of today's story is selling real estate is a big deal. To be a real tour on any level is a big deal. We need to take these relationships seriously. These people are family. These people are more important than family. These people, you know, they are trusting us. It may be their retirement. It may be, you know, their home. It, it's such a big deal. So on the flip side, take it seriously because it's an honor. It is an honor to help these people accomplish whatever goals they may have. Jay now is a millionaire and if you take the purchase price of his properties and where they are actually the values of them today I have helped him become a millionaire it is one of the best feelings in the world it's it is just amazing to know that I had a part in helping these people accomplish this all right please share your stories below what is your best trust story what is your relationship story the benefit of of having these relationships with your clients please share it below thank you so much for watching again if you have it hit that like and subscribe button right now i'm watching you all right have a great day talk to you later